Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 228. And today, today is our lesson number 105. This problem that we are about to solve is very similar to the problem that we did on problems rather that we did on day number 59 and day number 60, which you will find as question number 8 on page number 157. As a matter of fact, what I have done here, I have modified the problem that you see there, problem 2.5.2. I have modified it and I have taken the context of the of the problem from page number 157 and I put it here. And uh, this is how it reads now. It says, which of the following, which of the following could be the graph of all values of x that satisfy the inequality that we see on page number 228, which is 2.5.2, which is 4x plus 9 4x plus 9 over 11 is less than 5. That's the inequality that is given to us there and in that problem on page number 228 they simply ask you to solve the inequality. They do not ask you for the graph. I'm asking you for the graph here. It, just in the event that if the problem is presented like that in the exam. So these are the five answer choices. These five answer choices comes directly from page number 157. Turn to page 157 so you can see the five answer choices that I have on the blackboard. We're going to solve the inequality and we're going to identify the graph that goes with it. That's all. Just like we did yesterday and just like we did on page number, just like, the, the, just like we did on day number 59 and day number 60. On day number 59 we did this problem number 8 and on day 60 we did a bonus problem there. So that way you get a plenty of, plenty of practice. Anyway, enough of, the, enough of the talk, let's get going. Somehow, first thing we need to do is to get rid of this 11 from the bottom. How do we get rid of this 11 from the bottom? Well, that's very simple, very straightforward. Multiply both sides by 11. And since 11 happens to be positive, it is a positive 11 that we multiply on both sides of inequality here. We don't have to worry about switching the directions. Had we multiplied both sides of the inequality by a negative number, then we, we, we would have had to do what it says here. It says, I'm going to read it to you, it says, if we multiply or divide an inequality by a negative number, the direction of the inequality switches. The direction of the inequality switches if you multiply or divide an inequality by a negative number. For example, we know that 3 is less than 5, but if you want to multiply both sides of the inequality by negative 2, negative 2, negative 2 times 3 is negative 6, and negative 2 times 5 is negative 10, negative 10 is in fact less than negative 6. This is no longer true. It is Negative 6 is in fact greater than negative 10. Before it says this. Let's do, let's do it again. It says 3 is less than 5. This of course is true. But if you were to take the 3 and multiply it by negative 2, and if you were to take the 5 and multiply it by negative 2, then instead of 3 being less than 5, it should now say negative 6 is greater than negative 10. You see? Direction switches. Before it says less than, now it says greater than. Similarly, if you were to divide both sides of the inequality, uh, by a negative number. If you were to divide both sides of the inequality by a negative number, it has to switch. 3 divided by negative 1 is negative 3, and negative 3 is in fact greater than negative 5. This is no longer true. It has to be greater. Here we don't have to worry about any of that. I'm just uh, do, going over it one more time just to make sure that you understand it. This is, the, this, is the, this is the part where a lot of people end up making a mistake. Since we're multiplying both sides by a positive 11, we don't have to worry about any of that. So the 11 drops out, and here we end up with 4x plus 9 is less than 55. Somehow we have to get rid of the 9. How do we get rid of the 9? We'll subtract 9 from both sides of the inequality, just like you would do in an equation. There is no difference. The, princip the principles are the same. The only exception is, is what you see here, when you're multiplying or dividing by a negative number. You can add the same numbers on the, of, of the two sides of the inequality. You can subtract the same numbers from two sides of the inequality. You can do everything that you can do, that you would do with equality, you can do with inequality. Except that rule right there. That's all. So here we have a positive 9 
and here we have a negative 9, they drop out. This 4x is going to come down. 4x is less than, less than 55 minus 9. How much is 55 minus 9? How the hell do I know? I know 55 minus 10 is 45, so 55 minus 9 must be 46. Let's divide both sides by uh, 4. And again, this, since this happens to be positive 4, since we are dividing both sides by positive 4, the direction is not going to switch. The direction remains the same. That drops, that takes out this 4. And now we are left with x is less than, x is less than 46 over 4. We have to figure out what 46 over 4 is. Let's do it here. Where should we do it? 46 over 4. Or we can do it right here. 46 over 4. How many 4s in a 4? Obviously there is one 4 in a 4. How many 4s in a 6? There is one 4 in a 6. The remaining 2, the remaining 2 gives us the remainder of 2 4ths. Well, 2 4ths is same as 1 half. So it is, so this part is 11 and 1 half. So what we find is that, what we find is that x is less than, x is less than, is it just less than or less than or equal to? Oh, it's less than, it's only less than. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. This graph will not apply. I'll tell you in a second why. But this, this, these answer choices will not apply. We'll have to, we'll have to switch them. Just give me a second. X is less than 11 and a half. This is the answer. X is less than 11 and a half. Since it is less than, it does not say, it does not say less than or equal to. It just says less than, which means 11 and a half does not count. We cannot include 11 and a half. We cannot include 11 and a half, which means endpoint is not going to be included. I have to go back, I have to go there and, and, and modify all the answer choices because I can't just simply modify the answer choice and the correct answer because that will give the game away. So we have to modify everything. All of these have to be open circles. All of this, all of these have to be open circles. Open circle means, open circle means you cannot include the endpoint. So instead of a dot, instead of a closed dot, it will have to be open dot. These are all open dots. There you go. So this is how the answer choices are going to be presented to you in the exam. Because they're not going to just put one with the open dot because that, as I said, will give the game away. X is less than 11 and a half. So if you were to show this on a, on a number line, let me show you here. We don't need this anymore. On the number line, X is less than 11 and a half. Here is your zero. Here is a 10. Here is 11. Here is 12, this is 11 and a half, and x is less than that, we, not, we cannot include it, so this is the open part, and everything that goes here, it can be anything, it, it can be any value, it can be any value less than 11 and a half, it can be any value less than, this is 11 and a half, even though it's difficult to read, this is 11 and a half. So, it starts out in this positive territory right here, and it gets all the way here, all the way there. And is there one that matches that? Oh, that's answer choice A. That's answer choice A. A is the answer here. Answer here is A, except in my notes I have all the closed dots because I wasn't paying attention. I have to switch it. And of course, easier and a quicker way to tackle this situation would simply have to, for me to simply to go back here and make this a little less than or equal to. But I want you to see what do you do if it doesn't say equal to. Well, then the dots have to be open. That's all. That's all it is. Open dot means that you're not including that that endpoint, but everything less than that. So this endpoint represents here your 11 and a half right there. You see? So this would be this would be exactly 11 and a half. We're not including 11 and a half, but anything less than that. That's all. That's our answer choice. We're done. I will see you tomorrow, where we will spend some time discussing the concept of function. That's a very simple, but very fu very fundamental concept, and yet I have seen many a times clients have trouble articulating the concept of function and simply understanding what that means and how to read the bloody thing. They go around saying f of x, but they have no idea what that means. And instead of f of x, you put in front of them g of x or a monkey of x, they don't know what, I'm talk what, what, what the person is talking about. So that's what we're going to talk about tomorrow, what function means and what, what, what do these means, f of x and g of x and... Uh, k of x or l of x. It doesn't have to be just f of x. It could be anything. 
we'll talk about that tomorrow, what that means. And we'll solve the problems that you see there, 2.6, 2.61, 2 and 3 on page number 229 tomorrow. Okay. It's going to be a long video tomorrow. It's going to probably go on for half an hour like, like it sometimes does. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.